director of the Center for Global Justice, Human Rights, and the Rule of Law. And I'm also the director of the summer program in Uganda, our ABA-approved program at uh, Uganda Christian University, which is a wonderful place. Uh, uh, Regent is a member of the CCCU, the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities, which is a very large and, and reputable organization of Christian schools in America. UCU is the first uh, member of CCCU outside the Americas. It's a, it's a wonderful place, very, very well regarded, beautiful place. It's won awards for its beauty and, and serenity. And that's, uh, that's where this uh, program takes place. Uh, the program, and by the way, uh, the program has yet to receive official approval from the university. We're expecting that, we hope, this week or next. Uh, and with that approval should come uh, a, a, a more a certain idea of the expenses involved, the cost to you folks. So we're still waiting for that. It's not officially approved. So I'm, I'm going to be describing a program that is proposed and very likely to take place. It is ABA approved, but it's not yet received final approval from the university. The program embraces two classes, both of which are required. Uh, one credit class that I will teach on human rights in Africa, and a three credit class that will be taught by a professor who is formerly at UCU, at UCU for, for quite a few years, um, and that's going to be on uh, the, uh, the uh, legal environment in East Africa. And he's a well-recognized expert on, on that. Uh, he's now returned to the, to the practice of law in Georgia and is going to study for the priesthood, Anglican priesthood, and that's what's occupying his time. But he still has a very close association with UCU. Uh, his name is Brian Dennison. Uh, the uh, UCU is about, uh, it's, fif it's 15 miles north of, of Kampala, the capital. It's about a half hour drive, I think, considering the road, as There's I recall. Traffic, it's about two hours most of the time. <laughs> and the program includes visits to Kampala as part of the courses. So we'll visit uh, legal institutions, we visit uh, uh, lawyers, uh, Ugandan lawyers, uh, uh, officials, uh, and also the classes include visits from these officials into the classroom so that it, it uh, uh, includes interaction, significant interaction. We're hoping for also some significant interaction between the law faculty at UCU and the students and also the students at UCU and our students. Uh, we're hoping to have uh, at least eight students enrolled, six region students, two from outside region. There's a maximum of 14. Any immediate questions before I turn the program over to the previous uh, director of the program, Professor Valoni, David Valoni, for a slideshow? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, I'll be over there. And also, uh, Professor Valoni has suggested that I arrange my flight so that you folks, any, whoever wants to fly with me, uh, would be able to do that. So I'll try to pre-book in such a way to give you the chance to be on the same airplanes. Anything else introductory? We'll have time for questions uh, later on as well. OK. Professor Valoni. Sure. And we have to pass the mic. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, and that's probably everybody in the room, or most people in the room, other than Mark um, and a few others, uh, I'm Professor Dave Valoni. I was previously full-time faculty here um, for about five, six years, and I, now I teach on the adjunct faculty, teach crim law, criminal procedure. I don't see anybody I've had, but, um, well, of course, <laughs> yes, a couple of you guys. And they actually passed the bar, so I wasn't too bad at it. But um, I uh, had the privilege of helping establish this Uganda Study Abroad program back, uh, well, for, it took us about 18 months to put the whole thing together, and we went in 2013 during the summer. Um, I previously had directed the Strasbourg program, as has Professor Stern, um, so I've done both the European programs and I've done this Africa program, and I can tell you, hands down, um, that the experience in Uganda was far superior to the experience in, in Europe. Now, not if you're looking for a vacation, um, you know, you get all over Europe and you just want to do that, but the educational experience, the ability to really touch um, people who are uh, in the, the throes of what human rights, you know, uh, issues are right now, um, and some of those international law issues, rule of law issues, all those kind of things, it's very, very real. Um, and the people that you will talk to, you got a Christian university, as, as you'll see in the photos, is a very safe place, it's a great place to be, 
in the midst of a very chaotic region. And so uh, it's kind of the best of both worlds. I'll, I'll let you talk to some of that. Is I don't know what all you want to talk to, Mark. But um, let me just go through. I'm going to show you some photos. Um, any kind of logistical questions, things like that, I'll try to answer. But I may have to defer to Professor Stern because it's been two years since, um, since we've gone. And uh, uh, Professor Brian Dennison, who will be there as kind of the primary lead instructor. And he spent eight years in Uganda. Um, he's just since moved back to the United States, but he really was the catalyst behind us uh, forming this partnership and being able to do this. We'll be with you all. And I, I speak, I can say no, not enough good words about Brian and his knowledge um, of the region, his knowledge of issues in the region. Um, everybody who is somebody within Uganda has at one point or another talked with Brian Dennison um, and spoken with him. Uh, he knows folk, you know, justices on their Supreme Court. He knows um, the, the Attorney General and other folks throughout. So Brian is truly someone who's an expert. He's a U.S. attorney, um, so that makes him very easy to understand in the classes. Um, he's able to relate to you and, and communicate, but at the same time, he's got all of that on the ground experience. So it's great to, to have him uh, there. Let me walk through a couple of these uh, photos with you. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to step back here. Um, 15 miles, that's Makono. I'm, I'm sorry, that's Kampala. Um, 15 miles kind of north and east is uh, Makono. Uh, Makono, it really is, it's 30 minutes on a good day at 3 in the morning. Um, but uh, <laughs> but it's, it's a long drive when there's traffic. And um, you'll go back and forth because most of the court systems that you'll visit, most of the lawyers that you'll have a connection with will be in uh, Kampala, in the capital city. and so. You know, you, you travel that road a lot, at least we did, and um, you get used to it cramming in the van. And, but it's, you, you actually are riding a lot more comfortable than most people in Africa that you're driving past and around. So uh, it's pretty good. That's a picture of Uganda Christian. I'm sure you can see photos in other places. That's kind of the main building there at Uganda Christian. It was actually a seminary, oh, I'm sorry, um, before, uh, it was a seminary before it became a full up university. It's really the second leading university in the country of uh, Uganda, McCreary, which is downtown Kampala, is the state university. Been there much longer than UCU. Um, there are it, UCU was the second uh, law uh, faculty of law to be developed within the country of Uganda, and many would argue that it's the better faculty of law at this point. It's just that the state-run university um, has been there a lot longer, so most of the judges and people that are a little bit older uh, came out of there. So. You know, right now, they're really neck and neck, and they're both very, very good. Um, so you'll have a chance to study with some of those professors while you're there. Um, this is a picture of the dormitory where you will stay. It's called Save the Mothers. Um, during the year, the, the, the normal academic year, uh, single mothers who are attending the university attend there. It's run by um, some folks from Canada. They do not, um, they are not physically there during the summer months, and so we have rooms there. Um, and I can answer questions about the rooms if need be um, later on, but they're, they're nice by African standards. That's the outside. Um, that's a picture of the, one of the auditoriums uh, where they do chapel and other things. Um, I had that chance to teach in there. It's not where you guys will have class, but you'll have the opportunity to be around that building a lot. You know, I was, first time I was teaching, uh, red-tailed monkey was hanging out in the rafters while I'm teaching. They're all over the place. They're actually pests, but they're fun to look at for about four or five days. Um, <laughs> after that, it gets to be um, interesting, and you want to avoid certain ones. Um, that's, that's eight. We had 10 with us when we went the last time. Um, that was, that's eight of the 10. Um, uh, two of the folks that were with us from California are not in that picture. Um, we had one student from Florida State, one student from uh, somewhere in Cal what, uh, Western, no, we had two from Trinity, one from Florida State and one from, not Western State, I'll think of it, and in California, a law school in California. Um, so we had four and then we had six region students. You'll see our next speaker there in the picture. This is inside the Denison's home. They actually live on campus. Um, they're not there anymore because they've moved back to the States. But if you get an opportunity to get inside the, the, uh, uh, the vice chancellor's home or something like that, that's kind of what the, the, the folks live like that are actually on the faculty there, but um, Brian had a very nice setup and a good situation. He was very, uh, very much a part. It, it's a little different when we, when you go on one of the European um, uh, trips, 
you know, it's kind of, you go to class from 8 to 12 and everybody's kind of running around having fun the rest of the day. You really will hang out with this cr group of people you go with most of the time. Uh, because there's limited access to get off. I mean, you can leave and go off, but there's a lot of safety concerns, security concerns. And so we talk through that with everybody. And we have a little, I mean, there's, it's not that there's restrictions, but there's just wisdom uh, in where you're going and when you're going. And so we travel a lot more together. In the evenings, we do a lot more things together. We had a, a, a weekly Bible study that I didn't have the opportunity to do in Europe, things like that to, to give... Uh, to give people a chance to be together. Although, quite frankly, you're gone a lot of the days to get downtown and get back, and by the evening, you're, you're ready to take a break and then study for the next day. Because the course load's not easy. Um, I won't say that it's, uh, it's different in a summer program, um, but, but, but there's a lot of reading and there's a lot to do, you know, and they're real credit hours that you'll be getting credit for. But, uh, but it's, a, it's a great time. That's kind of the common area um, in Save the Mothers where you'll stay, another view. There's a little mini market kind of right off of campus. There's a couple of our folks out there. Um, this is downtown in Makono. Um, we were walking through the open air market and got bombarded with some kids and had an opportunity to take a couple photos. So that was, that was fun. Um, this is the room actually, and uh, Professor Stern told me that you'll be in the same room for classes. This is where we had all of our classes, the conference room at the Faculty of Law. Um, that's Brian Dennison there instructing. Um, and you can see there's electricity and laptops and you know things like that uh, but it's and it's kind of a nice closed environment kind of small uh, you know for perfect for 14 to 15 people and that's that's about it so it, it's actually a great place to study uh, this is there's Alyssa hanging out with the kids that's actually right outside of where the dorm where you'd be staying um, that's right outside there as well uh, that's from kind of the top of the hill. This is getting the orange sticks. This is the whole deal. Do, how do I get an internet connection? What do I do? Um, we can answer those questions along the way from the logistical folks, but for you know a price, you get a little thing that looks like a flash drive, stick it in your computer, and you're good to go. And that's the way to do it because the internet service at the university, while you have it and it's free, it is to stay it sporadic would be a compliment. Um, it is much better to spend a little bit of money if you really want to have access. If you don't care, then it doesn't matter. But um, if you want to be able to talk to the outside world, this is one of the ways. And we took everybody down, helped them get what they needed. Uh, that's, there's a very beautiful library on campus there. It was actually built primarily by the US State Department. It may be the only place in the world where you will see a plaque on the outside of a building that is signed by the US consular. Um, uh, uh, the uh, ambassador to Uganda, and it says, to God be the glory, right underneath his name, um, which I find is interesting uh, in and of itself. But uh, you know, money goes to where they think things are useful and where people are going to be able to use it and people will be benefited. So UCO has a nice relationship with those folks. That's matoke and a little rice and a little potato. Um, <laughs> If anyone asks, my, the piece of advice I got the first time I was in Uganda, I've been there four times, um, was if anyone asks you if you like matoke, the answer is yes. The answer is yes, because that's what they eat every day of the week. Um, it's what's going on. They know you don't like it. That's not the point. Um, do you like matoke? Yes. It's kind of a, a banana plantain. Um, it's, it's not bad. There's always potatoes, and it's just like normal potatoes like you'd get here. There's rice always. And we actually ate more than we ever eat. Um, there's a little canteen there, and we go there for lunch and eat major meals, and it was more food than you could ever. You, you can find really good food to eat. I, I did not go hungry in the least. You can go to the grocery store, and you can bring your granola bars if you need to, but it's um, bring a month's supply. But, it's, uh, <laughs> but it's, I actually enjoyed the food there for the most part. There's a few, you know, there's some things, if you've never had a whole fish, then you'll, you're, you, you'll see it before you're, you leave and some other things. But you'll just have to kind of work through what you like. Uh, this is a photo with um, one of the ju judges from the uh, Ugandan Supreme Court. And um, we had an opportunity to, of course, visit with them and hear his take on some really cool cases that were happening right at the time. I mean, it's, it's neat when you're, you're sitting in a place talking to someone who's making decisions that are relevant in international relations and human rights right here and now. Um, and Uganda is a great case study for the rest of East Africa. Um, Brian, uh, Professor Dennison will deal with um, kind of all of East Africa. So he'll talk a little bit about Kenyan law, talk a little bit about Rwandan law, a little bit about Congo, a little bit about South Sudan. 
But we do most of our case studies out of Uganda because that's where we're at and we can get the people right off the ground to talk to us. But the truth of the matter is Kenya's 15 years ahead, Congo's 15 years behind, South Sudan's 30 years behind, Rwanda's kind of about the same. So basically what you end up with is a pretty good picture of what it's going to look like 15 years forward, 15 years back, and kind of, and you get a chance to talk with all those folks. So it is just an excellent opportunity. Commercial court, commercial court, it's a pretty normal court building. I just only show this picture to show that when you get to Kampala, there's a grocery store that looks a lot like what you might find here. Now the food's a, you know, a little different, but for the most part, there is civilization, and you can buy groceries, and you can go back. And I, I, I just want you to realize that you're not in the going to the ends of the earth. Um, and I don't know, how, how many have been in Africa before? East Africa? Where? where? Uganda. Uganda. Kenya. Kenya. Uganda. 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 Okay. Yeah, I mean, in Kampala, or have you been up in Gulu, or where have you been? Kampala. Mostly Kampala? Um, by Gulu. Up by Gulu. I mean, as the further you get out of Kampala, the more uncivilized it gets, the more and more wide, you know, wide, wide Wild, Wild West you get, and then you can cross into Congo. I've been there a couple times, and it gets even more so. And so it's just, but I show this just to show people that are a little bit concerned, oh no, can I get something? Yes, look, you can get a book binder, you can get um, uh, water, diapers, whatever you need. Well, it's a wonderful um, it's a, shopping mall, too. I mean, oh yeah, the shopping mall. With all sophisticated sure. needs and shopping. You can get anything that you need, you really can. It's a month or five weeks, depending on, uh, what is this year's, about a month? Four. Four weeks, four weeks. So I guess it's the same program, but I just remember. I mean, here we are having lunch, actually, downtown Kampala. We worked that in one of the days. It was kind of a nice opportunity to have lunch together. And so uh, you can see that we could eat some of that. Um, part of your program and part of our program was Murchison National Falls Park. That is a part of the program. So I, as, you, as you pay the fees, everybody goes. And it's, uh, it's a, basically a small safari. Um, that you'll go on. Um, here's some photos from our trip. Uh, that's where I stayed. Um, we stayed in little huts like this. You could end up in one that's a little bit more like a tent, but, and, and that's okay too. This is the hippo that decided to visit us that evening. Um, you can see that he's right there. Did you get the photo of me running away from the hippo? <laughs> yeah. Um, I decided that it would be good to get up close and take a photo of the hippo. And he decided to turn and move toward me, um, to which these guys were on the other side of the hippo. The first thing they tell you is do not take pictures, don't flash, because that's not a good thing. And being the typical American that I was, I took a photo, the hippo noticed, and he came in my direction. He didn't, he didn't hurt me or anything, but they can be pretty vicious when they're on land. Just don't get between them and, the, and their food. Um, which is the grass. They come up and they graze in that area at night. Really, the only time they say you need to worry about them is in the morning when they're headed back to water and, they, and, and they're trying to get back and you just stay out of their way. It's, it's very safe. It's kind of fun. Um, some giraffes, a couple lions hanging out right in front of us. Uh, that's the boat we went on. That's uh, whatever. Um, that's, <laughs> that's Brian and, uh, and his wife, Mary Jane, who unfortunately I don't think will be with you all. Um, but uh, that's at Murchison Falls, which is very famous. There's a couple of our guys riding on top of the safari truck. There we're hanging out. Those are all hippos back in the water, if you can see them. And then the optional trip, which I highly recommend for everyone, for, is to go uh, take a little raft ride down the Nile River. Um, I, that's, I think, optional. I think you'd have to uh, fund it separately, but it's well worth the money. What do you think? I mean, it's, I, I think it's 100 bucks or something, but take a day. You raft on the Nile River. It is pretty cool. And things like safety in the United States, it's a little different. Um, <laughs> this, is us. this is actually us. That's us. OK, that is a photo of us um, hanging out, going through. This is another photo of us. Notice the guide coming off the back. Um, he's like, what's going on there? Uh, that, that is us. Uh, you see Kevin's right there in the front left. See, Ke that, that's right there. Um, I'm in the white t-shirt on the far right side there, so um, we're doing okay. This is us headed down into another one, hanging on tight, and that's, that's good at that. But it's fun and it's worth it. It's a little bit different because you're pretty likely to end up in the water. Um, but they have, a, um, they have a boat, for those who don't want to, that they'll, that they'll take down more safely. 
Um, but then they have what they call the medium riders, and then they have like the advantage crowd. And most of us did kind of the medium thing, and then they just they dumped us out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, these are the best photos. Most of it was like a float. You're just kind of floating down the Nile. I mean, most of it, it was just hanging out. But they had some pretty good rapids. There's a class four rapid. We, we a couple class fours, mostly class threes. We did, there's one class five that they, you have to get out and walk down past the class five part and then you go in at the four and you go down and uh, about, half the, about half the boats turned over. Um, and then they, they're flipping you on purpose though, to be honest. It's a little different than over here. They just don't, <laughs> they, just, they just put you out. And um, we went over, yeah, I won't tell you that part of it, but um, it's, you'll survive. You'll be okay. I got caught under the boat one time. That was kind of fun. Uh, that was the, yeah, that was the first time I went. I've done it twice, and I would go back. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. You're on the, the Nile. People say, what about crocodiles on the Nile? That's 2,000 miles to the north. Um, down here, there's, there's no wildlife of that sort anyway. Um, there are some issues with getting some diseases and stuff, so you take some meds and you do some things to make sure you're good, but, but you should be fine. I'm still here. We're still here. Uh, not, no worse for the wear. Um, that's good. That's a photo of our, our entire group with uh, Professor Dennison on the left, front left. I'm in the back right. And in the front is um, the vice chancellor of Uganda Christian University, John Signoni. Um, his, I'm going to get this wrong and I apologize because I know I'm on video, but I think it's his uh, brother or brother-in-law who is the attorney general for the nation. Um, for Uganda, and uh, he's very, they're very connected, he's a great man, and um, they're very hospitable, and uh, he's very good friends with Brian, so we had everything that we would have wanted or needed there while we were at the university. So that's just a little taste, I've got many more photos, um, I know I'm going to bring Kevin up and he'll talk to you a little bit about, about some things too, uh, maybe I should let him go and then we can yeah. do questions after that. Probably be good. But he needs to be you can ask me, well, let's, let's hook him up and then we'll do questions after. We've got a book that was passed around. These are pictures I took and we'll put in one of the free shutter fly books. So. I won't take long. I'll echo a lot of what uh, Professor Valoni said. It was a, I'll just say as one of the students who went on the program, it was one of the highlights of, you know, my law career here. Uh, Professor Dennison's class, uh, we broke down, you know, East African law. We went through the constitutions of Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Sudan. You know, there was the new constitution that was being written at the time in South Sudan. You know, it was the newest country you know, in the world. And uh, we really got into that. We got to meet, uh, like I said, the Chief Justice of the International Criminal Division, the ICD court in Uganda. We sat in his chambers for probably, what, well over an hour. And he just broke down the Thomas Coelho case, that, which is actually going back to that court at this point. If anybody follows East African law, uh, they had an amnesty issue. The, the Supreme Court said that they, the ICD could hear the case, and so now it's going back before the ICD. And it was just interesting to get to sit and listen to you know the Chief Justice of the court just sit and talk to us for you know for hours. And we got to go to a court session of I believe the High Court, a criminal court case, and sentencing in Kampala. And we met we with. The, we saw the very first plea negotiation. The very first plea negotiation, right, in, in Uganda. There were some NGOs working with uh, the judicial system of Uganda to implement, you know, plea, plea bargaining and sentencing guidelines. We got up, and what the prosecution asked for death, the defense asked for a year. And, you know, and so that was kind of where they were operating, and it ended up being, some, I think, you know, like 20 years of time served. So, some, some positive change going on there. So it was just really nice to see. And, uh, uh, and you talk about the vice chancellor, one thing too, his wife actually is a graduate of Regent. She came here and graduated, uh, I believe she got her education, education doctorate. doctorate in education or something here, here or counseling here from Regent. So they have a, a, a nice relationship with Regent. But just living there on campus, uh, the building he showed with the monkey in it, uh, there was a revival basically going on that week. So every morning, every night, all day long, there was it was full of people. There was this beautiful, wonderful music that and just singing. So it was a it was a great educational experience, a great spiritual experience, and and, and it was just uh, just great all the way around. I mean, the optional trips, the safari, and 
the whitewater rafting was basically just a bonus on top of what would otherwise be you know, a highly, highly recommended trip just for your legal education. I said the classes, while not overwhelming, don't want to scare anyone, but there, is, there, was, it was, there were real classes. And Professor Dennison is uh, just wonderful professor to, to be in class with. I mean, he absolutely loves East Africa, and he has worked extensively with, you know, the court system there and the educators there. And we really get into some, you know, some, some tough issues and some good issues. And you, you come out feeling like, like, you know, it was worth your time on an educational level. It wasn't just a vacation. It was, you know, it was, uh, was life-changing for me. I'm in the LLM and Human Rights Program right now, working on uh, my thesis on human trafficking and the East African Court of Justice. And that's been because, mainly because of this program. And, uh, you know, and I know uh, Professor Walton is going to talk about some of the externships or internships that are available. Myself, I w didn't have the opportunity to do that. I had a five-year-old at the time, and four weeks in Africa was all my wife was willing to allow me to be out of the country. And they, uh, she said, yeah, and if I ever go back, I have to take her with me. That's the promise I had to make, because she's heard, heard me talk about it since I've come back, and was a little bit jealous that she didn't get to participate. But um, I don't have a whole lot else to say. I just, you know, when Professor Stern you know, offered me the opportunity to say something, you know, I'm one of the few students that are still around uh, the campus here that actually was part of the program and uh, I would just say that you know if you're considering it please do it if you have any questions please you know come talk to me I'm around campus uh, this semester and I'll do my best to answer your questions I'll be honest with you and uh, but you know the, the you know, things that might stand in your way the finances it wasn't really you know more than what you're going to pay for those college credit hours anyway I mean it was very reasonable and you know the logistics are you know, there's nothing that I don't think, you know, if what, you know, you pray about it and it's what you feel God's calling you to do that should stand in your way on that end. So if it's something you're, you know, thinking about at all, please give it a serious consideration. Thanks for the chance to, uh, to say a few words. My name is Ernie Walton. I serve as the Administrative Director of Regent Law's Center for Global Justice, Human Rights, and the Rule of Law. I really just want to say two brief things, hopefully that will help you uh, decide to go to Uganda. Frankly, I want everyone to go. It's a great program. The first thing is, as a student not too long ago, uh, I did a summer abroad program and, and was just, by third year, I was incredibly grateful that I had gotten some credits out of the way so I could take 11 or 12 credits both uh, semesters my third year work a lot more and just sort of transition to work life so just getting some credits out of the way incredibly incredibly practical frankly so I urge you to consider that and, and part of that is honestly you're probably never gonna have a chance again to just go to Uganda for four weeks um, life happens you have families things happen it's just difficult some of you may work in that field and that may be uh, where the Lord leads you but for others it's just an incredible opportunity to actually go continue your legal education and get to go to Uganda and study. Uh, the second thing, and really why I'm up here, why I was invited to speak, is you know perhaps for some of you, uh, cost of traveling there and, and the logistics is somewhat of a, uh, a prohibiting factor. Um, the, the center is partnering with the program in that we are really trying to sponsor a number of internships in East Africa and, and globally next summer. So for not familiar effectively what the center does is we give grants anywhere from a thousand to five thousand dollars to about 20 students to do internships in the summer specifically in human rights and specifically designed to cover the costs so if you think about it you know we have and I'll, I'll mention these a few but a number of internships in Africa and in Europe as well not too far away where you, know, you get about five thousand dollars and that would really frankly cover the cost of your logistics, your airfare, and keep you there. So all you're doing is effectively paying for your credits, which you'll be paying for, for anyway. So for those of you who are interested in this program and are seeking to do some sort of an internship in human rights, it just makes a lot of sense because you, know, you, you can be eligible for a grant, and I will just say I can't guarantee it, but we really do want to support the program. We definitely feel the Lord leading us in East, East Africa. So internships in East Africa will be certainly given to be careful how I phrase this, but extra weight perhaps, um, uh, just a strong consideration for those that will receive a grant. 
So what are some of these internships that we have available? We're still working on some, and you're going to hear from two of the students who did them last summer. But we have two spots already secured to work with the Ugandan Department of Public Prosecutions, and that's really our Attorney General. So Uganda's Attorney General is a Christian. He came to Regent, just the, the, the gentleman that uh, Professor Valoni was just referencing, named Mike Chibita. Credible Christian man, and he has agreed to take two students to work uh, with him next summer. And, and Courtney will just talk about a little bit about her experience. But those, there's two internships already available. You'll see them on Pathfinder. There's also two internships guaranteed to be available with the Land and Equity Movement. It's a nonprofit or legal organization that focuses on primarily uh, land conflict. It's a huge issue which you'll study in the program. And Chelsea, one student here, interned with LAMU last summer, so she's going to talk about her experience. So those are four internship placements we've already secured that you can apply for through my office. You'll see them on Pathfinder. We're also working on a number of other internships in Uganda. One was 60 feet. They deal with children's issues, a lot of the plea bargaining, protecting children. They're not a legal organization, so there's some hurdles with that, but that's one we're, we're working on. We've had a number of students intern with them in the past, and they've had really good experiences. Also working on internship with Champisi Child Care Ministries. If you were here at Chapel three or four weeks ago, Peter Sewakir Yanga talked about his work fighting child sacrifice. Again, not a legal organization, so there's some, some hurdles that we would have to work out but we're seeing if we can develop a legal internship with his organization. Um, the, the, the American Center for Law and Justice also has an office in Kenya. I'm trying to convince them to, to open up an intern. That's in the works, so that's another possibility right there, neighboring Kenya uh, as well. Um, there's also an internship we had last summer and likely we'll have again this summer, still working out the details in South Africa. Again, Getting to Africa, a lot of the costs are taken care of, so another flight down to South Africa with Advocates International, fighting religious liberty issues. Um, Juliana Battenfield was the student uh, who did that internship last summer. I can connect you with her if that's something you're interested in. But the point is, we have a lot of internships lined up in Africa for you to you know, be available. You do the program, you learn the law, and then you actually get to go and, and do what you're learning about, experience what it's like to be uh, human rights attorney in the African context. But if for some reason you want to go to Uganda, but you want to intern somewhere else, somewhere else globally, you know, you're still eligible for the grant and it's still a way to get a lot of your costs covered. You know, stopping back in Europe, if you intern in, in, in Austria, we have a student who did that last summer, or Bulgaria, you know, you stop back in Europe before you come back to the States. You know, that's fine as well. Um, we, we really want you to go on this program. It's a great opportunity in the Center for Global Justice. Internships will be available to help you partner. So those are just you know, some of the internships we have available, obviously you're eligible to find your own. You know, so if, if you get an internship with, you know, uh, a, a judge in Kenya or, or somewhere else in Africa, you know, bring that to us as well. That, that would be great and certainly be eligible for a grant to apply. Um, we'll talk about more about the internship grant process at the center's informational meeting on November 16th. But just wanted to, to make clear that, yeah, the, the internships will be available and very much those internships that we, we've secured already the, the, the dates, they said, yep, we'll, we'll take them right after the program ends. So, I mean, they're set up specifically tailored to be done in conjunction with this program where you learn about the law and then you get to go actually do the work. So that's all I have to say. I'll be here, though, for questions if there's anything else you want to address. Well, but first, before, before we take questions, I'm going to introduce the two interns and they're going to just come up briefly, share their experiences. So Courtney Marisigan is a 2L and she'll talk about her internship with the Department of Public Prosecutions. And then following her will be Chelsea Mack, also a 2L, who interned last summer with Land and Equity Movement. First time using one of these guys. Okay, so my name is Courtney and I interned with the Department of Public Prosecutions uh, this past summer in Kampala, Uganda. It's also known as the DPP, and I swing this around. Okay, so uh, I specifically interned for Justice Mike Chibita, who Ernie mentioned, and he signs off on whenever Kampala, or not just Kampala, Uganda prosecutes cases uh, on behalf of the Republic. And so he is asked to speak at many conferences throughout the year, and so he had his other interns and I do a lot of research for him and write reports that he would then present on at these conferences. So we were exposed to a lot of different uh, legal topics such as anti-torture legislation, uh, church-state relations, police-state relations, and plea bargaining. And what I took away most from those assignments was that he had us survey other countries and how they implemented anti-torture legislation, for example. And then we could, we were able then to look at 
Uganda, since it's still a developing country, and see where the fallbacks were for their legislation. And then we were even able to offer suggestions as to how they could work on those fallbacks. And then he even invited us to attend those conferences, which was really great. And my favorite conference I attended was the Anti-Torture Conference, and we got to hear premier human rights organizations from across Africa come speak and have passionate debates. And then it was, it was really cool to just hear firsthand that the country is actively trying to eradicate torture. And so that was just one of the most notable experiences I had. And then, uh, oh, and then Justice Shibita also invited um, his interns and I to attend court proceedings in the High Court of Kampala. And we got to watch a high profile terrorism case go on. And it was really cool to be able to compare and contrast that with the proceedings here in America. And then, of course, like Professor Villani said, there's so many opportunities to go out out of the city, which, by the way, has everything you need. It has the internet, it has the electricity and the Wi-Fi and everything. And, um, and we got to go to the countryside where there's just lush vegetation and you know millions of, that's an exaggeration, but millions of uh, banana trees and um, corn stalks. You're right, you're right. What am I saying? <laughs> so it's beautiful. And we, Chelsea and I got to rappel down a waterfall. We got to fall into the Nile River and we got to, uh, <laughs> There was one time where Chelsea fell out and she was the only person I knew in the boat and I was like, my only friend, what do I, what do, I do? And, uh, but it was Uganda safe, so no worries. And uh, <laughs> Uganda safe. And then, so in addition to that, we also rode on top of the safari van like you saw in the picture. And then we even went on a, um, a safari walk where we were accompanied by a, a, an armed park ranger. So it was all good. We got to get really close to some of the animals. And uh, so, and in addition to all of that, my favorite thing, hands down, was meeting the people of Uganda. They're so warm, so welcoming. They're still my friends to this day. We keep in contact. And, uh, and to, to, to see how humble all of them are and to see how they're so thankful for the little that they even have was, caused me to have a lot of self-reflection and, and made me think about what do I value most in life and just really changed my perspective on life. And so I would really encourage all of you to apply for a grant, which, by the way, was more than enough to cover my cost of the entire trip. And um, yeah, so please, please ask any questions and highly consider going. Thank you. an experience in her, um, or inexperience. Um, so yeah, as um, Ernie said before, my name is Chelsea Mack, I'm a 2L. Um, I think a lot of you all probably heard me in chapel talk about my experience, but I should have added to that that I actually did have a really um, good experience in terms of the actual internship <laughs> itself. Um, part of my time, or majority of my time, was focusing on um, helping with a land grabbing report that LEMU, Land and Equity Movement in Uganda, that they had worked on um, years ago. And they were trying to basically finalize it in order to get it published, because they do um, a lot of publication in order for people to gain a better uh, knowledge, understanding of how to combat these land grabbing cases. So whether it's the citizens themselves or the policy makers, um, the judges, the courts, whatever, that's their thing is getting the information out there in a readily available um, form to help basically basically for everyone to just know what's going on. Um, so that was a lot of my time was spent on that. Um, I was able to go to some of the field offices um, of Lemu Lemu. So they're based in Kampala. Um, that's their main secretariat. They do all the administrative things, but they also have three other field offices throughout um, north, northern and eastern Uganda. Um, part of my internship, I, I just requested just to go for a week to one of our field offices in Soroti, and I was able to stay there and get to know the staff. Um, that was where I was able to see and meet a lot of the land grabbing victims and hearing cases um, just about, I mean, one particular case about a man who was um, basically driven away from his land and his family in 2008, and this was just this year that I was talking to him, and so he hasn't seen them, hasn't gone back, his wife, his kids, nothing for seven years because they made false accusations against him. So Lehman was just working with him to basically um, be able to uh, legally get, claim his land back. Um, so it was just really cool to see uh, the victims, um, the ones that I continue to read about throughout the summer uh, in these different reports and whatever, and to see them and meet them and understand that this is real information um, and real work that Lehman is doing. Um, Besides that, I mean, just Uganda itself, we just had like this saying, it was like, Uganda, just do it. I mean, you, you should just 
you should just go honestly as as was said before, um, you may not ever have another chance, an opportunity to go, and especially with the grant provided by the center, um, it, it really covered all costs. I far exceeded all costs that I needed. Um, and the people are just amazing, 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 amazing. We pretty much have very similar friends, so we like go back and forth. I actually just took a picture of her, which I'm gonna send to them, just say like, hey guys, we're talking about Uganda. Um, but the people, they just really are so welcoming. And I mean, it's like the minute that you meet anyone from Uganda, even Peter is here a few weeks ago, the first time I met him, he was like, when are you coming back? And that's always the question before they get to know anything about you is they really want you to come back. They really want you to invest in their culture and their families. And they really just consider you part of um, what, who they are and what they do there. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, you can always ask tons of questions. The food is really good. I, I personally like food. Um, I eat all the time. <laughs> so the food limit. Matoki I liked. Um, Posho not so much, but you'll figure out what that is later. Um, That's good. That's about right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. But their food, you kind of get used to it. It's really, really cheap food. And you get a lot of big portions. And they're, you just always eat, always eat. I, I don't know if that's like an exaggeration. There's just always food available. Um, and I mean, just side markets and, and the side streets and just everything. Um, it's just always something going on. Kampala itself is probably a little bit different than Makona. We never went to travel to Makona, but um, we're very familiar with it. So our experience may be slightly different, but seeing that you'll be in Kampala most of the time, um, you'll still get to experience whatever, because Kampala is basically a city. It just happens to be in Africa. So that's, that's I think, about it. OK, great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>